Hi, Julie. Hello. She must have hit her head. Poor thing, maybe she fainted. She's coming around now. Good thing I happen to be here. Are you all right? Yeah. Thanks. For saving my life. Mr. Barnett, our organization has a problem. I've already guessed that, Mr. Davidson. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. We represent several of the city's largest department stores. I understand. The majority of our work is taking legal action against charge account customers who fail to pay money which is owed to these stores. Uh, skip tracing. It's our job to collect the money for the store. And that, Mr. Barnett, is where you enter the picture. I'm a private investigator, Mr. Davidson, not a bill collector. No, I guess I fall under the category of bill collector. And this brings us to the problem. Before I can collect a bill from someone, I must find it. That's why we called you. We want you to find someone. We want you to find this girl. It's the most attractive offer I've had all day. I don't suppose the story is as pretty as the picture. Oh, nothing sordid. Just the usual thing. A young woman with expensive tastes and not enough money to pay for them. Julie Matthews, weight 120 pounds. Measurements 36, 26, 36. A model? Yes. And she's been buying clothes to fit those measurements and not paying for them. Was any action taken? Certainly. We sent her several collection notices and repeated warnings of legal action. They were all ignored. And now she's disappeared. No leads? None at all. Where'd she work? She's held several other jobs besides modeling. Some theatrical work. And her last employment was uh, at a place called the Spa. I understand it's a combination resort and nightclub, uh, just out of town. Yeah, I've heard of it. It's owned by Danny Martin. You mean the Danny Martin? I mean the racketeer. I've read about them. Well, Miss Barnett, that's all I can tell you. Julie Matthews, she's missing. We'd like you to find her. I'll go to work on it, Mr. Davidson, then I'll turn this over to the Missing Persons Bureau. Police? Well, now, we don't wish to accuse her of being a criminal, Mr. Barnett, and legally... She cheated your department stores out of their money. That's not exactly honest. Well, no, And but... besides, Julie Matthews may no longer be alive. Not alive? The police have a nice big ice-cold filing cabinet, and everybody in it is recently missing from somewhere. I never thought of that. Somebody gets put in that filing cabinet every day, Mr. Davidson. You can get a ticket on your toe just crossing Times Square. Well, hello, Gloria. Mike! How nice of you to remember me. I never forget a face. Last time I saw you, you said you were going to call me for a date. What happened? Did you run up to die? I didn't want to break up a romance. Romance? Yeah, rumor I had it that you were seen running around with a certain bookie named Nick Vesufus. <laughs> oh, him. Now, Nick and I are no longer seen together. Really? What happened? His wife saw us together. What are you doing here, Mike? I'm looking for a girl. Oh. Uh, well, take your choice. Uh, there's a neat package. Yeah, but it's all wrapped up. That's Danny Martin's girlfriend. Is that Danny with her? Yeah, he owns the joint. 
But from what I've heard, it's probably his only legitimate business. If he's trouble, Mike, you better stay in your own neighborhood. Yeah, maybe you're right. There's a better class of people in my neighborhood. Where are you going? I'm still looking for a girl, remember? I'm a girl. So you are. It's a kind of phrase. We could make beautiful type music together. Baby, why don't you take a nice, cool swim? And shrink my bathing suit? Are you kidding? What are you worried about? If it shrinks much more, I'll be seeing you. I hope you find Julie. What do you know about Julie? She used to work here. She was a cigarette girl in the casino. Thanks. Excuse me, my name is Barnett. Mike Barnett? I've heard of you. I'm Danny Mudd. I've read about you in the newspapers. Ah, you know the newspaper boys. They like to make a big McGill over nothing. What's on your mind, Mike? A girl named Julie. Julie? Julie Matthews. She used to work for you. You're going to give me some kind of a fast line. Let's keep the conversation nice and pleasant, shall we? Yeah, Julie worked here. Do you know where she is? Nope. Any idea what happened to her? Nope. Do you know where she was living? For all I know, she isn't. What do the cops say? For all I know, she is living. I guess I'm not much help, am I? Maybe you're not trying very hard. Look, Barnett. Julie Matthews was working here for four weeks. Two days ago, she didn't show up for work. I've got myself a new cigarette girl. Not a very exciting plot, but that's the story. It'll never sell. Thanks for your help. Anytime, pal. Going into town? Yeah. How about a lift? Like that? Well, not exactly. Mike, it's such a nice day. Why don't we take a drive? Where to? Well, I know the cutest little rooming house in Greenwich Village. A rooming house in Greenwich Village? Who lives there? Julie. Gloria, you'd make a good detective. I'd like to. Client lady? I'm the proprietor, yes. Does Julie Matthews live here? Julie Matthews does not live here. Julie Matthews did live here, but if she comes back, I'll throw her out, bag and baggage. When was she here last? Three days ago, left without so much as a thank you. Anne owes me two weeks' rent. We'd like to see her room. No male visitors allowed. Detective, eh? Well, it's about time you started checking on that girl. This is Julie's room. How do you know? I guess I forgot to tell you. I live here, too. That's my closet. Yours? Yeah, Julie and I were roommates. I guess I forgot to tell you that, too. Getting information out of you is a slow process, Gloria. Yeah. This closet was Julie's. For a gal who couldn't pay her bills, she had a pretty classy wardrobe. She had some pretty classy boyfriends. Look at this. The real McCoy. Well, she had such wonderful things, why'd she have to deadbeat a department store? Because nobody ever gave her a bouquet of money, I guess. I guess she never had much cash. Gloria, I think you better tell me all you know about this gal. I don't know much, Mike, honest. We were only roommates for a week. We doubled up on rent to save dough. She never told me much about herself. Has she got any family, any relatives? Not that I know of. She just has boyfriends. One particular boyfriend? They were all particular. You know, guys with lots of dough who could show her a good time. Julie was a very pretty girl. Obviously. But it doesn't add up, Gloria. A gal doesn't just take off to the wild blue yonder and leave diamonds and minks lying around. You think something happened to her, huh? What do you think? I think maybe this is what you're looking for. What is it? A Chinese music box. See? This is Chinese? It's got Chinese writing on it. Why do you think it's important? 
Well, Julie said something funny last week. Well? She was on her way out to work, you know, Danny Martin's place, and then she came back and handed me this music box. Gloria, she said, if anything ever happens to me, take care of this. It's important. And then she left. I thought maybe she'd had a drink, and then I remembered. Remembered what? That Julie didn't drink. It must be important, Mike. I don't know why the Julie said it was. Maybe not. Maybe it just has a sentimental attachment for her. Sentimental attachment? Are you kidding? Here's something to get sentimental about. Solid mink. And these aren't exactly made out of old headlights, either. Mike, if a girl says, Gloria, take care of my mink and my diamonds, okay, but a Chinese music box. Gloria, I agree with you 100%. The answer is here, but where does it lead us? Maybe to Chinatown. And maybe to China, but I'm not going to China. There's Chinese writing on it. You read it? They can read this stuff in Chinatown. Maybe some guy will remember selling it to Julie. What have you got to lose? You're a detective, Mike. You've got to do a lot of footwork. Legwork. Sue me. It's a nice day. Let's go to Chinatown. Gloria, honey, you don't make sense, but I like your ideas. You do? I've got a lot more. Like what? Like buying me a drink, or two, or three. It's a date. With three drinks, you might do a little more talking. Change your clothes, and I'll pick you up later. Hey, I thought we were going to Chinatown. How long will it take you to dress? Five minutes. Okay, I'll be back in an hour and wait for you to finish. <laughs> Got a moment? Sure. What's up? Ever see one of these before? Mm hmm An authentic Chinese music box. <laughs> Made in Japan. <laughs> I only have two more like this in the case. And a couple of dozen more in the storeroom. What about it? I'm curious about the Chinese writing. Can you translate it for me? No, it's in Chinese. But maybe my sister can tell you. She studied the language at college. Hey, sis! Oh, this is Mr. Barnett. How do you do, How Mr. Do you Barnett? Do you? Uh, sis, can you read this? Yes. It's a humorous saying. Roughly translated, it means man with homely wife gets children. Man with pretty wife gets trouble. <laughs> <laughs> In China, it's a big yak. Is that all it says? Yes, we sell a number of these. They're very popular. The kids like them. They're always fascinated with the secret panel. Secret panel? Mm hmm. Let me show you. Secret compartments right inside of the cover. Just take it and pry it open. Okay, like this. There's something in here. A pawn ticket. A pawn ticket? Is the detective business that bad, Mike? Business is getting better. <laughs> Something I can do for you? Yes. I'd like to redeem that, please. Oh, yes, sir. Oh. Camera, huh? Yeah. 50731. Just a moment, sir. 50731. 50... There we are, sir. Right here. That'll be uh, eleven dollars and twenty cents. Eleven twenty. Yes, sir. Twelve dollars. Twelve and eighty cents change. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. well, Don't open that. Why not? Still got film in it. It'll spoil. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'll be careful. I'm very anxious to see how that film comes out. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
about time he got back. A couple of very good reasons. Well, where did you find these two? In Chinatown? Search him. He's clean. I never let anybody search me without a warrant. Where's the camera, Barnett? I don't know what you're talking about. What are you doing? He didn't have time to hide it in here. Okay, suppose he's got the film. Now get this straight, Barnett. We don't know whether there's any film in that camera or not. But if there is, don't get it developed. And just so you don't forget. Followed you here? Yeah, and I have an idea. They're gonna watch every move I make. Hey, hey, what about our date? Come on along. Where are you going? To the police station. I'll take a rain check. Matthews is dead. At least we can assume that she is. These were found last night. Where? On the George Washington Bridge. You sure they belong to Julie Matthews? I'm positive. Now here, look. Her pocketbook. Driver's license. Social security card. Identification. A photograph of herself. And uh, this note. Suicide note? Yes. No explanation of why she did it. I am taking my own life. There is no one to blame but myself. And I have no shame or fear for what I am about to do. Julie Matthews. The handwriting checks with the signatures. I knew you were looking for the girl, Mike, so I called you this morning, but you weren't in. You mind if I hang out of this for a while? No. Now, Mike, uh, you don't think it was suicide, do you? You don't think so either, do you? No. What's your reason? Why would she be wearing a heavy coat in the middle of summer? Hello? Hello, Mike. Well, goodbye, Gloria. Mike. I'll bail you out in the morning. It's about Julie. Another Chinese music box? You remember I told you that she didn't drink? Well, I just remembered. On her birthday, she had two martinis and she started to giggle. Yeah, well, that's life. Then she stopped giggling and started to swear. She was sore at Danny Martin. And wait till you hear what she called him. Well, Danny Martin's all of those, all right. Then she said, I'm coming into some money pretty soon. So I said, who's dying? So she laughed and said, Danny, when he finds out what I've got on him. Then I said, what do you mean? And she said, never mind. It's just between me and Danny and the Income Tax Bureau and my little candid camera. Well, at the time, I figured it was just the two martinis talking, so I didn't pay any attention to it. Gloria. Gloria. What was that you said about the Income Tax Bureau? I told you. She said she was going to get money from Danny or the Income Tax Bureau. Mike? Mike, did you hang up? Gloria, baby, why didn't you tell me this before? I'm sorry I didn't, Mike. Well, it was just that I didn't want to get Julie into trouble. But I was lying here thinking tonight. Now that she's dead, how much trouble can I get her into? 
Baby, I don't know about Julie, but you certainly saved me a lot of trouble. Now, be a good girl. Hang up. I gotta go. Mike, what are you going to do? Well, I think maybe an early morning swim might wake me up. Mike, you're not going to Danny's. Yeah. I want to see how he looks in the morning before he's got his holster on. Well, well. It isn't the early bird. Yeah, I'll try to catch a worm. We don't open the joint till 10 o'clock. I wanted to talk to you, Danny. I thought you might like to hear it in private. Okay. Start with the words. It's an old Chinese saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. What's it worth to you? Meaning? Meaning how much do I have to pay for this blackmail? Uh-uh. Julie tried that, look what happened to her. I didn't kill her. I didn't say you did. Well, what are you saying? This film explains everything. A few close-ups of your unusual bookkeeping. I imagine the government would like a few enlargements. Give her that camera, Barnett. Why'd you take it? I'd rather have you give it to me. Is that gun loaded? What do you think? The camera isn't. Open it. So, where's your evidence, Mr. Detective? Right in your safe, Danny. The real books and your real income. All it takes from me is a phone call to Washington. There's no phone where you're going, Barnett. Okay, then I won't need this. Catch. <laughs> Julie? So was Danny. I had to find him before he found me. Don't come any closer. I knew you didn't commit suicide. Yeah, I went to a lot of trouble to make people think I was dead. But it's not too late. Baby, you're terrific. <laughs> I had to do it. She was creating a man shortage. same channel next week for another exciting case from the file I call Follow That Man.